heavy traffic at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos due to the two-day industrial action and backed upon by members of the Air Transport Services Senior Staff Association of Nigeria and other aviation unions. The unions are calling on the federal government to grant their demands, which include the non-implementation of minimum wage consequential adjustments and arrears for the Nigeria Meteorological Agency, as well as the planned demolition of agency building in Lagos for an airport city project by the Minister of Aviation. It's a warning strike, two days warning strike. The idea is to get the government to act expeditiously on those issues so that we will not have any cause to embark on a full blast strike. But I can assure you that we are open to engagement. Uh, I must say it is regrettable that this strike is taking place today. If the relevant government agencies have done the right thing, there were several interventions on our part for them to call us to discuss this issue even when a deadline of 31st day of March was given to us uh, that they were going to call us back to brief us on what uh, they had done thus far in terms of getting the conditions of service out and consequential adjustment for our members in uh, Nimet. They did not deem it necessary to call us back to a meeting. All entreaties on our part fell on deaf ears. Despite the warning by the aviation unions, the Port Harcourt International Airport continues to operate unhindered. A visit to the facility by a crew shows that passengers are being attended to with nothing to suggest that a warning strike is on. Some of the union leaders who spoke to our correspondents at the airport explained why they decided to take that approach. The affected uh, agencies in the aviation union are NAMA, NCA, INCANT and NIMET. So FAN is in solidarity with these other agencies because there are requests on condition of service and as well the uh, consequential adjustment has not been met in these agencies. On this synonymism, we don't have to start destroying uh, facilities or no, uh, start causing uh, uh, no go slow everywhere to put uh, attention into people. Meanwhile, aviation workers in Kaduna on Monday also shut down activities at the airport as they joined their counterparts across the nation on a two-day warning strike. They blocked the roads leading to the airport, locked up offices including the terminal building as well as the control tower. dive into the issues as we welcome Ocheme Abba, who is General Secretary, National Union of Air Transport Employees, as well as the Chairman, Association of Aviation Training Organizations of Nigeria, Bankole Bernard. Both of them join us virtually. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, gentlemen. Let me begin with you, uh, Mr. Abba. Um, there are those who are wondering why now, and as we highlighted earlier, the disruptions have affected quite a number of people in no mean measures. Why now? Well, uh, there is uh, always a time for everything and uh, no time to disrupt uh, activities is a good time. Uh, so now, because it is at this time that the circumstances of the situation has peaked to the point where it is no longer possible to continue to forbear with the relevant agencies of government. These issues have lasted between seven up to 13 years in the making, and every effort to get amelioration has failed. And so now is the only time left, and this option is the only option left for us to address the situation. Okay. Yeah, that's why it is. Well, Mr. Bernard, let me ask you uh, perhaps the same question, but in a different way. And as you've heard, Mr. Abba said, it's lasted between up to about 13 years. Now, those who will be wondering, 
What efforts have been made over the past 13 years to ensure that we do not get to this point? Well, um, good morning once again. It's uh, <clears throat> very clear that um, the issue at hand now uh, boils down to the fact that um, there's a trust. Every tell everybody not to come here. Considering the fact nobody that to come here, here. we're transitioning into a new government, so the whole idea of the union taking this action at this particular point in time is, if we waited this long and nothing has been done, what is the guarantee that um, the new administration is going to um, listen to us, considering the fact that this particular administration is going to be winding down in the next, in less than two months. And before a new minister is, elect, um, is selected, or appointed rather, to take up the portfolio. So the, the, the earlier we get this thing done, the better for all of us. But in all of it, it's a warning strike and it's a two day strike. I want to believe that um, there's going to be, there's room for engagement and mm. the engagement needs to happen like now. Over the last few years, the present Minister of Aviation and the person of Senator Hadi Sirika have um, witnessed a couple of um, stakeholders meeting, which means that he's opened to this kind of dialogue. So I want to see uh, a dialogue ensued between this uh, the union and um, the aviation um, leadership to ensure that um, we bring this to um, an end as quick as possible. Because mind you, aviation is very sensitive and is more like the most reliable means of transportation for people moving uh, within the country. So my appeal will be that, can we get this sorted as quick as possible and not dwell on the issue of trust? That can we trust the, president, the new coming administration to listen to our cause? I think we have to get it done and get it done like now. That's what I believe. Okay, well, uh, let me come back to you, uh, Mr. Abba. There are those who would also be wondering, hey, um, there are quite a number of stakeholders that are, you, that are involved in this. I mean, you, Mr. Bernard has just spoken about the involvement of the Minister of Aviation. But then there are other stakeholders who operate at the airports, the authorities, the NCAA, the FAAN, and all of that. Which agencies of government or at what level of government should these conversations be holding and why have it seemed to be stagnated over the years? Mr. Abba, that's for you. Now, uh, quite, frank, quite frankly, the issues have gone beyond the levels of the agencies as well as the Ministry of Aviation. They are currently firmly squared with the National Salaries, Incomes, and Wages Commission, as well as Office of the Head of Civil Service of the Federation. The agencies and the various unions have negotiated these conditions of service. Seven, eight, nine, ten, up to 13 years for the various agencies. And the agencies are the Airspace Management Agency, the Civil Aviation Authority, the College of uh, Aviation Technology, as well as the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, four of them. And these uh, negotiated conditions of service have been processed through the Ministry of Aviation to the Salaries and Wages Commission and the Head of Civil Service. And for this number of years, these agencies of government have been processing the approval of this. In February last year, the Honorable Minister of Labor, because of an ultimatum that was issued, called all the agencies together, together with the Minister of Aviation himself. These two ministers supervised a meeting that lasted into 1 a.m., at the end of which a memorandum of agreement was signed, meaning that all the outstanding issues, including the conditions of service issues, we are given time limits within which they were supposed to be uh, released and done with. 
they were not done with. This very agency, the Salaries and Wages Commission, ODA came to Lagos and engaged all the agencies and the unions, also last year, at about March, April. And all the agencies sat one by one with the Salaries and Wages Commission in order to fine tune whatever was outstanding. And up till now, after that exercise, after that exercise, the agencies and the Salaries and Wages Commission still are on, uh, has refused to release those documents. After the agencies signed and told them, this we negotiated and we are able to pay from our internally generated revenue. Up till the time we speak, the Salaries and Wages Commission is still arranging to meet with the agencies. So how long are we going to continue to play this game? The Minister of Labor has done his best. The Minister of Aviation has done his best. With respect to the uh, minimum wage consequential adjustment, including the intervention of the Minister of uh, Labor, the Minister of Aviation, and the PAMSEC Ministry of Aviation, the, because uh, NIMET is on IPPI, that's on the government uh, payroll system. And so they have decided that they are going to start the implementation this, this month. But they have arrears since 2019, and nobody is talking about it. There is no arrangement that will say, this is how we are going to uh, sequence out the payments. And we have also told the uh, Minister of Aviation, you want to demolish this uh, uh, agency headquarters, you, you want to build uh, an airport city, fine and good. But these are places where people work and earn a living. So if you are going to carry out the demolition, shouldn't we have a more planned and sequenced program so that these people can have alternative places where they can work? And those who are going to be relocated to other places can be paid their due allowances so they could go there and work. What is the hurry? It's not as if something odd will happen if we do not build the airport city today or tomorrow. And this is the twilight of the administration. So this is uh, all building to suspicion and uh, people have, having to think perhaps there's something on towards about this. Mm. So these are generally what the issues are. And with regard to the payment of uh, salaries and wages commission, it is them to release. No process, every process has been completed. To release this approval. All right. Uh, just for the benefit uh, of a lot of Nigerians, some of them they didn't even know anything like this was going on. They just know they want to go to the airport, they want to travel, and they were stranded yesterday. By the way, I see that it looks like there's some activity around you. So that means that today's uh, day two strike, or at least the action, is on right now. Am I correct? Yes, you are very correct. Okay. So for the benefit of those who are trying to just wrap their heads around it, maybe they are, I mean, they're not in government, they're just Nigerians, but they need to understand the issues. Just how many issues are at stake right now. I know you mentioned the aviation complex. You mentioned the consequential adjustment uh, for the minimum wage, uh, 2019 up until now, four years. You also said it's been on for 13 years. So if you could just count so that Nigerians can follow through with this conversation, how many issues are at stake? And um, just to what extent has there been some sort of conversation? Because I understand there was a meeting on Sunday which deadlocked. So uh, there was that meeting. Why did it deadlock? But particularly, how many issues are at stake, really? OK, there are just three uh, simple issues at stake. Uh, one of them is the payment of minimum wage consequential adjustment, which is consequent to the Minimum Wage Act of 2019, which every government agency have benefited from. At this moment, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency is yet to benefit from it. In February last year, uh, through the Minister of uh, Labor uh, brokering that this meeting, the consequential adjustment for all the other agencies on aviation was done and they have been implemented. But that of NIMET is yet to be implemented because it is on government payroll. And so that is an issue that is outstanding. Second one is that the conditions of service for the four agencies that I named earlier have remained in the vaults of the National Salaries, Incomes, and Wages Commission and the Office of the Head of Service of the Federation for the past seven to 13 years on that processing. And the workers can no longer continue to wait because these conditions of service ought to have been renewed about three times within this period of waiting. So workers have been stagnated for seven, nine to 13 years. 
And the third issue is the planned demolition of the headquarters of the agencies. Mm. And so, uh, and so we, we are, and so we have three issues. We have three issues right. that we are addressing okay. right now. Just before I go to Mr. Bernard, let me just quickly ask you, uh, you didn't speak to that meeting which uh, deadlocked on Sunday and why it deadlocked. Okay. Also, um, the, the Minister of Aviation, I remember I think when NACO went on strike, I think it was in January, uh, the Minister of Aviation was asked about it and he said that, well, according to the um, FAN Act, which has been assented to, to by the President, it prohibits industrial actions around airports. And at that time, he says that the government will ensure that no essential service is disrupted by anyone no matter how aggrieved. That was in January. This is April, and we're seeing even a bigger strike, it would seem. So I'd like you to respond to that statement made by the Minister of Aviation regarding, uh, you know, actions, industrial actions around airports. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity. First, the meeting of Sunday was deadlocked because all the government agencies present, nobody could give a guarantee of when this conditions of uh, uh, service for the agencies would be released. Nobody could give uh, any guarantees. And so we were also unable to give any assurances of not going on strike. That was the deadlock. Now, with regards to, uh, however, it's important also to note, we understand that the Salaries and Wages Commission has also convened another meeting with the agencies today. We don't know, we are not invited to the meeting, so we, are, we don't know what discussions are ongoing and how that will pan out relevant to the situation at hand. Secondly, with regards to aviation being an essential services provider, this is a fallacy. It's not correct at all. The International Labour Organization, through uh, its official instruments of uh, action, has already defined what essential service is and has also clearly defined that aviation is not an essential services provider, except the services provided through air traffic control. And for the benefit of our listeners, an essential service is one through which its withdrawal may affect the lives of groups of people. Uh, uh, if you withdraw that service, it means you put at risk many lives and aviation does not provide such service except through air traffic control in other words for example if an air traffic control says airplane should not land for example you might be putting to risk the people who are in that aircraft but when you say aircraft should not take off no no risk you are not you are not putting anybody's life at risk and the services that uh, airlines provide is not different from the services that Ekenedi Lichuku or any transport company provides. So aviation activities are not essential services by the definition of the International Labour Organization. Beyond that, the National Industrial Court has ruled that aviation mm. or airlines do not render essential services. All right, all right, so, Mr. Abba. That's the situation. I, I mean, some would also bring in the conversation around air ambulances and, and, and all of that, whether or not you consider them as essential and will they be affected by this, since we know clearly that they convey people to hospitals when emergencies happen. So I wonder if that's also being considered. Just like you know that Nigerian hospitals, Nigerian doctors have been continuously going on strike without any... Uh, I mean, uh, talk about essential services. So uh, I don't know where this situation, uh, this talk about essential services and not going on strike is not neither here nor there. All right. So hospitals go on strike. Okay, let me bring in Mr. Bernard. Lots of issues have been brought into play right now. And, you know, we like to refer to people who want to travel for various reasons. And they are the receiving end of this. Some, I mean, a lot of them clearly have paid for their airfares. All they expect is for the other side to, you know, uh, meet the end of the bargain. So seeing how these issues are playing out two days, so, I mean, it shouldn't escalate beyond this, except the issues are not resolved. Is there an easy way to resolve this from government? Because it appears as though after the meeting deadlock, because he says government did not give a word, something definitive. 
do you still think that government is able to resolve this in a simple manner? Well, I'll still come back to the issue of trust that I spoke about earlier. And while Mr. Abba was speaking, he has narrated the Minister of Aviation, the Minister of Labor. And in the, on this same breath, and in this same government, we're talking about another aspect of, of the government that has refused to yield to their demands. I would have thought that um, this kind of protest, we would have sealed the office of the head of service and make uh, life uncomfortable for the workers as well as the head of service, but that was not done. But the general masses that are going their normal way are the ones that are fully affected by this action. It doesn't mean that their demands are not right, but I think their demands should be channeled to those that have created the problem rather than the innocent masses that need to enjoy services that they have paid for. As you're equally aware, there's been strike in France for God knows how long now. And I haven't seen where they have shut down the entire uh, airspace. But they haven't done that because they feel that they need to face the government and face the government squarely to resolve the issue at hand. I will encourage Mr. Abba and the other members that, look, let us narrow this issue down because Mr. Abba has mentioned three different issues. So the question now is, how do we address it? We're talking, on, we're talking about demolition. It's a different issue on its own. We're talking about the welfare and the salary wages. Of, it's a different issue on its own. And here we are that we've met everything together because there is no trust, as it were, right now, because this present government will elapse in the next two months. And once the government is out, they don't feel that demand that they've been fighting over the years is going to be met. So it means that the new government, they will have to start all over with the new government. And they are feeling that it is about the right time for them to carry this thing out carry this strike out and make sure that it is effective. Because if it's not effective, if the masses do not feel it, the government will not listen to them. But I believe that we cannot give up on engagement. Engagement is highly necessary because that is, that is more like the best way to get things done. Thank you. Okay, let me ask Mr. Abba a question now. I'd like to uh, find out, you know, this building of Aerotropolis, which we understand is going to affect the, aid, your, uh, the, the offices of your agencies. I I'm wondering, have, have alternatives been provided? What sort of conversation is ongoing with regards to that? Is it that you're really opposed to building the building of the Aerotropolis or because your buildings are directly affected is why you're kicking against this? Oh dear, it appears that uh, Mr. Abba is, uh, we've lost him just there, but he was the one that I had that question for. Um, it, it does appear that there, part of the demands of the workers um, is the fact that their buildings are going to be affected um, in favor of an aerotropolis. I, I, since this is one of the demands that they are, you know, making, how do you think, I know you've spoken in general terms, in, in terms of how this particular, uh, this particular issue be addressed. Uh, but if this, is the, if this is part of the concern that they have, uh, that the building is about to go down in favor of an aerotropolis, uh, do you, that's something that ordinarily should not have been objected to, assuming alternatives were provided. Uh, do you think that the authorities in this regard also bear responsibility for the reaction of the workers? This is for you now, Mr. Bernard. I mean, um, yes, I, I, I really believe that the government should have provided an alternative accommodation for the agencies, which is the normal thing that should have been done. But like I said to you, 
if you look at these issues, this, if you're talking about the accommodation, is an issue that can easily, easily be resolved. But we have three combined issues that have been addressed by this strike action. The question is, if the government provides an accommodation right now for the agencies, does that mean that the union will no longer embark on strike in the future concerning these two other issues? Of course not. There's still going to be issues. There is issues surrounding the welfare of the union, which has lingered for years. And I so, I so much believe that should be addressed or the strike action should be at the office of the head of service and ensure that what has been agreed is being implemented. It is one government. So the government cannot be saying yes on the one breath and the other breath, they are saying no. So we have, we have to be able to harmonize it and get them to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So issue of accommodation can easily be sorted out with the uh, Honorable Minister of Aviation and that will be taken out. Okay. But creating this huge inconvenience, loss of funds, uh, 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 grounding of business for the entire aviation industry, it, it, it's unfair on the masses. Mm. Well, can, I, I, I understand that, it, Mr. Abba. I think there's a better way of getting it done. I understand Mr. Abba is back now. Um, I'd like to find out, it would be interesting to find out from him, uh, first, if he agrees with you that this protest should have happened at the office of the head of service, since that's where uh, the conditions of service can be addressed. Uh, but also, uh, it would be important for him to also address this question as to whether or not alternatives were made for the accommodation of the agencies, since there's a plan to pull down their offices in favor of an aerotropolis. So, Mr. Abba, if you can hear me, I'd ask these questions earlier. Do you, what do you say to those who think that this protest should have been happening at the office of the head of service? It's muted. So, Mr. Abba, if you can hear me, please unmute and um, you can answer our questions, please. I'm actually unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Now, the, the issue of this protest is a withdrawal of service. We are saying that we can no longer continue to work under these conditions. And so we are withdrawing our services. We are not working for the Salaries and Wages Commission or the Office of the Head of Civil Service. So we can't withdraw our services there. You withdraw your services from where you are working. It's a decision that we can't continue to work under these adverse conditions. Uh, that's what this uh, protest is uh, about. And um, uh, with regard to the issue of uh, 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 alternative uh, accommodation, what, that's exactly what we are asking for. We are saying that the, the airport city or electrolyte is not an emergency. There is not, no life depends on it. So we have some, we can give ourselves some time so that we can have a planned or phased approach. So we can start by first providing alternative accommodation and then moving people to where, uh, if those who may not be needed here, we can move them to wherever they, they have been and they can work. And then we we'll have an empty shell of the that we can, uh, uh, demolish if we so choose. That's, that's just our point. It's not supposed to lead to a strike. It's just for us to agree that, okay, we are not just going to throw people out and make them redundant. That's, that's just what there is to that. Okay, well, you say that um, it's a withdrawal of service, but from what we also see, the strike action yesterday caused heavy traffic. And as a result, a lot of Nigerians couldn't get access to the airport. So in addition to your withdrawal of service, it was seen that there was also a deliberate action uh, to make sure that the masses felt the result of your withdrawal of service. Is that correct? Um, Usually, uh, when things are not happening the normal way that they should happen, um, you always see this kind of uh, things that uh, people uh, variously refer to as uh, collateral damage. 
Well, unfortunately, that situation arose. And in our statement uh, to the press before the action, we, we also expressed regret that this was likely going to cause, uh, you know, uh, this kind of situation. And advised that people who have businesses at the airport should seek alternative, alternative means either for movement or for travel. So you, you, people are not aware that the airport road leading the two international airports is not a public road. It's actually a private road because it's just an access road. It's part of the airport. But people do use them are pass through. So that those all those issues are mixed together, and unfortunately, it resulted in that situation that we saw yesterday. Hmm. Well, I, I do not know if it's going to result in the same situation today because, as you said, uh, you know, people suffered yesterday. Uh, you've said this collateral damage. I do not know if you have the same intention to keep the same, uh, make the same collateral damage today. Uh, but, you know, some of the concessions that you have made with regards to the uh, demand, with regards to the Aerotropolis, um, some people will say, why is that so difficult to reach a consensus with uh, the people from whom you're making these demands? Yeah, okay. Uh, quite frankly, we did not set out yesterday to do any... We did not set out yesterday to, to set... We are, not, we are not... Am I muted? Please go ahead, sir. I can hear you. Okay. We did not set out yesterday, for example, to be on the roads. What happened is that we wanted to picket our offices at the terminals. But soldiers, uh, particularly the Air Force, occupied those offices and made it impossible for us to picket the offices. So we did not plan to be anywhere near the road. But this happened as a result of the activity of the military. Today, however, we are also taking efforts because it's a warning strike. Because it's just a warning strike. We are making efforts also to see that we do not affect the movement of people particularly on the roads. But that will be if the military, because the environment is heavily militarized right now. So if they, if they permit, we will not we will carry out our activities without disrupting anybody's movements. That's our plan. Well, Mr. Cheme Abba, General Secretary, National Union of Air Transport Employees, as well as Bankole Berna, Chairman, Association of Aviation Training Organization of Nigeria. Thank you, gentlemen, for being a part of our conversation this morning, hoping that the authorities at various levels have taken their pick and will address as necessary. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, we've since been joined by Captain Musa Nuhu, who is Director General, Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. He's also joined us virtually this morning. Thank you, Captain Nuhu, for joining us this morning. Well, you've uh, perhaps been able to listen to some of the minister's uh, description of aviation as an essential service, as a fallacy. But, you know, this conversation keeps revolving around the passengers. You know, we call them innocent passengers. But really, the passengers have been going through this for quite some time now, and it's not just about the strike. And I've been looking for this opportunity, really, to ask you this question on behalf of the innocent passengers. They can't go on strike uh, when they are treated unfairly, when the flights are shifted back and forth, when they don't get any communication, uh, when they try to seek redress and first trying to get through the, to the customer care is like hell. They are not, you know, spoken to you know, uh, with respect, and when they even want to get refunds, it takes time, long time. They have to go online, write letters, do mails. I'm sure you've seen some of those cases. So let's try to at least get some reprieve for those innocent passengers this morning. When those issues arise, how, uh, how much uh, work have you been doing to ensure that passengers, or at least the airlines, do right by the passengers who have paid for the service? And most times, or a lot of times, let me just say, they do not get value for their service. So in terms of seeking refunds, what does the law say? How soon can they get their refunds? When they're not treated fairly by the airlines, what should they do? How do they get a remedy? Those questions are bound, and I'd like you to speak to them this morning, Captain. Well, thank you, Ramon. So that's uh, very important thing. <clears throat> I will have the, what we call the consumer rights uh, uh, and, and the uh, uh, regulations, and also in the uh, Civil Aviation Act, and there are certain things depending on the, the length of the delay or the cancellation. There are certain 
uh, compensation the airlines are supposed to pay uh, the uh, passengers. And the, uh, uh, a lot of passengers have complained, to both to uh, NCA and also sometimes to the uh, Federal Consumer uh, Competition uh, Commission, which they have written to us, and actions have been taken about uh, against uh, these airlines. In fact, some of the cases have ended uh, in, uh, in litigation. And the issue, the problem is most of the time, uh, the tendency of the passengers not to report or make complaints. If we don't receive complaints from the passengers, uh, to be honest, there's nothing much you can do. But even last week, we uh, did engage with a couple of airlines on the issues of delay and trying to uh, resolve uh, these problems. Yes, I think a lot more can be done. And we started working to improve the situation of the passengers, the inconveniences, and the suffering they go through uh, uh, because of the uh, delays and sometimes uh, cancellations. We, I have been uh, a victim of that, so I understand how frustrating and how uh, horrible it can be because people miss their connecting flights, people miss their appointments, both medical appointments, uh, business appointments, and others, and that is not acceptable. Uh, no person paying for a service uh, should go through that. And yeah. efforts have been made. Uh, I'd like you to speak to the refund aspect quickly as we wind down. So how soon am I, should I be able to get my refund if my flight is shifted, who knows, some hours ahead? Sometimes if it, it's even moved uh, earlier, you know, you get all of these yes. messages. So how soon should I be able to get my refund? Because a lot of people want to choose another airline so they can meet that appointment. So should it take days or I should get it immediately? Well, it, it, sh it should be immediately, and uh, we currently reviewing our regulations to review the uh, what's what's there in the past that gives uh, some days. And I don't think it's fair if my flight is cancelled. And what will happen with the new regulation that will be signed into law very soon when it's all cleaned up? As if you cancel my flight, you should put me on another flight immediately or give me the option of uh, refunding, uh, getting refunded immediately, so that I can make other plans. I absolutely agree with you, and uh, the efforts have been made. We just had a stakeholders meeting on the, this issue uh, about uh, same time last week, and a review of regulation to update this and make it easier. The passengers, without the passengers, we don't exist. And exactly. in fact, the passengers, the passengers are those who pay our salaries. The majority of the year, uh, uh, the entire generator revenue of NCA. 80% or more. Okay. It's from the 5% paid by the passengers. So okay. they pay and, and us. Perhaps in the, in the same vein, uh, just this one, and please take it in, th in 10 seconds if you can. Uh, you know, uh, Dr. Gabriel Lowe, president of the Aviation Roundtable, once said, ask the question, who takes responsibility for financial losses when there are strikes? Uh, he also cited an example, for instance, of a domestic carrier uh, reportedly losing 500 million naira due to MM2 shutdown. In that instance, can you hazard a guess as to how much is lost when there is a strike? Honestly, I cannot, but it's certainly in the billions when you have a strike every day, for, from direct losses to the airlines and indirect losses to the, uh, uh, to the economy, because uh, when people miss their connections, a lot a lot is lost. I can't see what I can guarantee you is in the billions. In the billions? And you have that one figure, one digit, two digit billions? I, I can't. At least over a billion. At least what I think I'm being very, very conservative. If okay. you look at the direct and indirect losses. Well, we, yeah. we look forward to, thank you so much, uh, Captain. We look forward to the resolution of these issues, perhaps hopefully at the meeting that you mentioned this morning. Captain Musa Nuhu, Director General, Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, thank you so much for your time and your perspectives this morning. Thank you. If you can just give me a second to make one comment. Uh, the meeting today is a process. Once the Sergeant and Wages Commission gives go ahead, this uh, agencies can pay this money and the condition uh, they approve that that goes to the head of service to approve the conditions of service so it's a two-part process today's meeting is to uh, determine the ability of the uh, agencies to be one once it's done then the head of service will use that input to approve 
the uh, conditions of service. So if we tell you today everything is going like to be Like how long will that, will that take, Captain? One month, two months? Sir, I don't work in the office of the head of service. Okay. All I know that we'll, we'll, push, we'll push it for it to be at as uh, to be out as soon as possible because the workers have feared enough. And uh, All right. I think this should be ended as soon as possible. Thank you so much for your perspectives again, Captain Nuhu. Thank you. We're back after now to take on another issue. Please stay with us.